Well, folks, welcome back to the historical channel of madness. Oh, <laughs> uh, look who's here. You know, you know what's going to happen. I'll try to keep her calm as much as I can. Uh, so anyway, this video is going to focus on a short uh, review, too, of blue chip picks. And I've been using them uh, almost a year now, so I can tell you uh, some things about them that I didn't know before during the last review I did on them, whenever that was. It's on my channel here. If you want to look through the files, you can find it. Uh, but this one's going to be on uh, blue chip picks and uh, what I think of them and their price and their performance and how they hold up. And I'm going to show you up close a pick that's uh, had the shit used out of it. And one that's not being used so much and a brand new one that's never even touched a string. So, uh, but first, um, got a couple of guitars in the mail last week from YouTube users. And I want to show you those because that may be or may not be things to come on this channel. I don't know if I can have time, I'll film them. Uh, if not, you probably won't see them. But anyways, I want to show them to you. Uh, there's uh, supposed to got three last week. Two of them came in. I guess the other ones got delayed or something. It didn't come today. Today's Monday and it didn't come today. So I'm looking for it tomorrow. So uh, maybe that may turn out to be one of the YouTube vids. I don't know. It just depends on how much time I have, you know, when I start working on them. <laughs> what are you looking at? So, uh, anyways, hold on. Uh, let me show you these guitars and show you uh, what's probably going to come up on the channel. And then we'll get right to the blue chip thing. So, hold on. So, here's the first one that arrived. I should have already had the case open, probably might have helped a little bit. What do we have? An Ibanez Performance. 12 string guitar. I uh, don't know the model number of it. I uh, haven't looked at it that closely. I am humidifying it. I got humidifiers down here and in here and inside of it. Got the hole blocked off. I'm humidifying it from the inside out as well because it was very dry very very dry um, I'll show you yeah, hold on a minute the first thing I checked was this check that out I'm gonna have to take the bridge off of it and clean all that up and re-glue the bridge because it's it's okay on the sides, but it's pulled up. If you, uh, I, I doubt you can see it. No, the light's not right, I don't think. It's really pulled up uh, kind of bad. If the camera will focus. I don't know if you can see that or not because of that shadow, but it's pulled up fairly bad. You can see how far the paper goes under it. So that's uh, the first thing that I'm going to have to fix on this guitar. I don't know about the neck and what kind of shape the neck is in or the, the frets look good on it. I don't know if a truss rod works. I haven't tried any of that. I just wanted to get some humidification into it first and then, you know, take it from there. If uh, the truss rod works after that, I'll, you know, do start to work. Start seeing what all it needs. <laughs> But anyway, I wanted to show you that. That's one from a YouTube user. Uh, that's from uh, Rich, and I, I'm not sure if this is his YouTube name. I think it's 1958WV Picker, if memory serves. Uh, forgive me if I got that wrong. I'll put it in the links below, if it's just to make sure I get it right there. So anyways, hold on. Let me get the other guitar and show it to you. Hold on. Gretsch Electromatic. This guitar is actually brand spanking new. It's still got the felt under the bridge if you look. Most people take that out. I'll have to contact the owner again, see what if he wants to take that out or leave it. I would take it out. Uh it's got a pick in the strings. Anyways, uh this one just is gonna get a basic setup. 
I checked some things out on it. It came set up, I guess, from the factory. It's a G5120 model. For those that are familiar with these, I think some of these knobs are push pull. Well, maybe not. I thought they were. Huh. No, they're not. Some of the other Gretsch models along this line are, do have push pull knobs. Man, that is one sweet instrument. That came in the mail last Friday. So, uh, and like I say, there's no complaint on that. It's just a, a basic setup, pretty much, is all we're going to do to it. Um, and a demo. I may be able to play this one myself. It's not so light of touch as I set the Jackson up for. That's what the user wanted on that Jackson. I, he's happy with it, I assume. But, uh, anyways, I wanted to show you these. That's a beautiful piece right there. Beautiful guitar. I'm going to set it up uh, to factory specs and just check everything out for the guy. So let's get on with this blue chip pick thing. Uh, hold on, I'm going, to, I'm going to put some heavy duty lighting on these picks and uh, use some uh, magnification so you can see and judge for yourself. So hang on a second. I'm trying to get on these with an extreme amount of light. And I'm having some difficulty with reflections here, but maybe I can get enough light on it so you can make out. The pick on your left, you can see that it is, it's got a little bit more wear on it than the one on the right. We're looking through a magnifier and using zoom, but I wanted you to see that. You can see the pick on the left has a tiny bit more wear than the one on the right does. Uh, that bevel on the pick, I had I ordered those with the bevel already made on the pick, so it's not worn that bad, but I'm just saying, you know, there is some bevel there. If you order them with the bevel like I have, and, and you get them, they look like they've been used, but they haven't. But both of these have been. Like I say, the pick on the left has had the guts used out of it, <laughs> and the one on the right's been used a whole lot, too, but... Uh, the one on the left is the one I used mostly over the last year. Uh, I'm going to get some uh, better magnification on this in a minute, but right now I want to see if the zoom on this camera is actually better than the magnifier. And I don't know if you can see that any better or not. But you can see the bevel is got a little bit more wear on that one on the left side here's the other side of them and there again the left one is uh, just a tiny bit more uh, worn out the one on the right's been used a whole hell of a lot too I mean and it's basically not showing anywhere but we'll compare both of these to a brand new one in a few minutes. Now this little magnifier I'm using right there has a tiny little round window in it. You can see it right here. Right there. It's shining light through or something. Uh, I don't know what that magnification is, how much it is, but it's high. And I'm going to try to get that on the tips of these picks so you can make your own call, you know, on how they've held up. And then I'll tell you more about them. Hold on. God, this is hard to hold that camera still through this magnification. You're looking at the tip of the pick that was on your left. Uh, you can see quite a bit of wear there, I think. It's just roughed up. It's not a lot of wear, actually, but compared to a new one, I guess it's quite a bit. Uh, the other one... There you can see some wear on it as well, but it's not very much. The one that's actually worn the most is not very much, but I hope you can see that, man. It's very hard to hold this camera still. That pick on the left, I have drug around to festivals all last summer. Well, all last spring, summer, fall, and up into the winter. 
and uh, you can see some scratches and some wear as opposed to this one which also has a little bit of scratches and wear on it it's not as bad now let me show you what I'm trying to do I'm trying to shine through that little tiny circle right there so hold on I'll get the new one out and we'll, I'll show you what a new one looks like compared to those two and tell you more about how much they've been used maybe this is a little bit better lighting I don't know but hopefully you can see this if I can hold the camera still that's the that's the one on the left that's been uh, had the shit used out of it man I used that pick a lot compared to the next one the one to the left has been used a lot the, the next one to the right has also been used uh, very much I mean and it shows very little sign of wear and there is the brand new one to the right now maybe this would be better just let you look at all three tips this way I can see that the the left one far left one is got a lot more wear on it than the other two the middle one does have some wear but not like the first one the third one like I say is brand new it has never touched a string let me try this and see what happens now it's not going to focus so that's about as close as I can get with this magnification and the lighting error that we are having so yeah that pick on the far left uh, like I said I drug it around the festivals we played in uh, we played in freezing cold temperatures rainy days damp days dry days uh, extremely hot days uh, days the humidity was extremely high well I probably used that pick on the far left in all kinds of conditions now they have a tackiness about them and I love that very much and it's a very good thing up until a point uh, with my hands screwed up like they are now uh, they tend to sweat a lot when I play and uh, like I say up to a point that tackiness is nice but up to a point if you sweat very much it becomes a very hard pick to hold on to um, most people don't have the hand problems I have and their hands probably don't sweat like that if you're if you're the kind of player that your hands sweat a lot a whole bunch you probably wouldn't like these uh, blue chip picks these are TD-80s uh, but I think they all have that um, tacky feel. Look who's here. Oh my god, we're all in trouble now. Uh, maybe she's going to leave. But uh, they all have that tacky feel to them. And up to a point, man, it, it works perfectly, you know. But uh, I have uh, focal dystonia in both of my hands. And I'm fighting a hell of a battle right now with that. One that I'll win, as you'll see, if you stay tuned to this channel. But uh, anyways, it, it causes your hands to sweat more than normal. And uh, they are very hard to hold on to. But probably no harder than a Dunlop pick like this. Now I want to show you this. If I can get it up here. Check that Dunlop tip out compared to the blue chip tip. There's the blue chips. There's the one that's been used a bunch. This Dunlop pick I used just a, a few days shy of three weeks and you can see it's worn completely out basically. The tip is nearly completely gone. It's hard to even distinguish it. It has a tip. <laughs> it's a two millimeter also which is what the blue chips are. But as you can see, I would go through, man, one of those a month, or more than that sometimes. And like I say, that blue chip I have been using basically about a year now. 
played every day with it, some days 12 hours, you know, a lot of days 12 hours. Uh, and you can see the way, and it's been played hard, I mean, good God, man, you, nobody should ever play that way, but kind of had to under the circumstances. Uh, but it was played really hard, I mean, it wasn't just, uh, you know, soft playing on the strings. That pick right there was hammered, <laughs> and you can see how well it's held up. It does have some wear. That one has a tiny bit, that one has none, it's brand new. And of course, there's the Dunlop again with basically no tip left on it, worn completely out. There, maybe you can see. I was trying to get the light on it right, but take it from me, there's the tips, it's bad shape. But let me set this camera back up a certain way here, and I'll show you. What I'm talking about, I got the place is a hell of a mess, man. I've been working on, I put tuners on a banjo for a guy, the Keith tuners, and on the one banjo, and I put a head on another banjo. Anyway, hold on, let me set the camera up, and I'll tell you more about the one picks. more shot if I can get uh, the light and everything right. I can't see with all this bright lights in my eyes here, but I want to show you one more time. I hope the camera gets this. The one to the left has many, many miles put on it. The one in the middle has many miles put on it. And the one on the right is a Dunlop and it's completely worn out. It's, uh, probably couldn't even play with it anymore. But uh, like I say, that bevel that you see on the blue chips, I ordered those with the bevel on them. You can get that without that. I think it's called a speed bevel or something, I can't remember. But uh, I like it because it's like it's pre-war, pre-worn, you know what I mean? It's not like a brand new pick when you start using it. Now, I'm going to tell you some things about these picks, so hang on. So, yeah, man, uh, you know, would you want to pay $50 for a guitar pick? Probably. If it's going to last the way those last, uh, you know... I probably would. Well, yeah, I did. I did already. And I'm satisfied with them. I have uh, thought several times, you know, because of some things that I ran into with Blue Chip that kind of was distracting. I didn't really not like it, but it was. I didn't like it either. Like what I was talking about with them being, you know, so slippery. If you sweat so much, uh, they become kind of hard to hold on to. If your hands don't sweat very much, or if they do sweat just a little, you know, I say go for it. Give it a shot. Uh, one of the other things I didn't like about Blue Chip was on those terribly humid days that we played bluegrass vessels and it was so hot and humid, they kind of had a, I don't know, a, like a scratchy sound when you would run the pick or, you know, when you're flat picking. Uh, you banjo players know what I'm talking about when your metal picks get uh, not really rusty, but they just get scrapey on the strings. Same thing here. It, it, it kind of got that way. In fact, that's why I switched from the pick that had been used the most to the next one because it was that scratchy. You probably could take a Dremel tool and some really, really, really high rubbing compound and maybe get that out. I don't know. I haven't tried it. Uh... The reason that pick got that way, though, was from playing way too damn hard and too loud and just, you should never play like that. But like I say, under the circumstances, I had no choice. But I think that may have uh, contributed to that pick getting that scratchy sound. And, uh, you know, I'm sure, pretty sure I can save it with a Dremel tool. Uh, but those are the only two things that I, you know, that I didn't really like. If you sweat a lot, they're hard. They get harder to hold on to. If you sweat normal, they get tacky, and you can't you can't throw one down, man. It's like it just sticks to you. It doesn't turn, you know, in your fingers like a lot of picks do. Turn on their side or they're around backwards. These don't do that. Uh, and that scratchiness sound. That was the only two things that I didn't like, or you know, I wish didn't <laughs> appear. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, over Dunlop picks or horn picks, um, graphite picks, plastic picks, all the picks I have tried. 
and I've tried a shitload of them. I like blue chip the best. I paid 50 bucks a piece for the ones you saw. Probably, uh, you know, have enough of them to last me. Well, yeah, I'll have enough to last my life, I'm sure. Uh, and I think I can save that one. But uh, I would rec highly recommend it. Now, there's a, another pick that I'm interested in. I haven't tried one. Uh, a buddy of mine here on YouTube, we talked about him a little bit. I'll put a link down here to his YouTube channel. And you can go there, and I think he's, he has a demo on one. He talks about it some. And he has a link on that uh, video to the website where you can order these picks. And I can't remember the name of them, man. But they looked and sounded like they would be a very good uh, option. You know, you might want to check. They're cheaper than Blue Chip, too. They're still a little expensive, more expensive. They're ready to guitar pick. But they're, they're a little bit cheaper than Blue Chip is. So I'll put links down here. Y'all can go there to his channel and listen to him, and he can tell you about them. And uh, like I say, he has a link there to the website where you can order them. I, I'm not sure. I think maybe you order them directly from him. I'm not sure. They're very limited. I do know that. Uh, but you know, I started to switch to those, and, and I thought, man, I've got you know, literally an arm and leg in the blue chip picks now. You know, and I really like them. I don't hate them that much. I mean, the the two problems that I found are not that bad, you know, I can live with it, and they ba basically went away, uh, I think the scrapiness was just from the high humidity that day, and the way that chip, that uh, pick was worn out, you could see under magnification it had like lines worn in it, you know, which would make it uh, um, scratchy on the strings. So uh, I just switched to another pick and problem was solved and I lightened up, way lightened up on my play and since then and I've never had that problem anymore. In fact, uh, it's helped my hands from sweating so much. Uh, like I say, I have focal dystonia in both hands right now. I'm so screwed up I can't even play or I would demonstrate uh, this difference in sounds of the blue chip and a plastic pick or the Dunlop that I was using before and horn picks. I used those right before. I went to blue chip. I, I'd like to demonstrate the difference in sounds because there is a big difference. You may or may not like the way blue chip picks make your instrument sound. When I first got my first one, I sat down with uh, one of my Martin guitars. It sounded like a different guitar. It sounded totally different. I didn't like the sound, the tone that it produced. But I had 50 bucks in the damn thing, you know? I couldn't just throw it down and and uh, I throw it away and I got to experimenting with it and turning you know different angles of attack and I found that that too changes big time the tone and overall sound that they make your instrument produce so yeah I liked it and once I figured that out you know and uh, when you first get them like I say you may not like the sound that they they produce or make your instrument produce but if you mess with it, get diff try different angles, try turning the pick upside down, that makes a difference sometimes, depending on how it's cut, how it's made, you know, the bevel, whether you get the bevel or not, I would recommend that bevel, the bevel pick from uh, Blue Chip. I would recommend that because uh, it's like a pre-worn, like a pick that's already has some wear on it, if you know what I'm saying. Now, uh, they make your guitar a lot louder, too. That's uh, a big, big difference I saw. The first thing I noticed right off the bat was how much louder the guitar seemed to be. I couldn't believe it. Now, I liked that right away, but like I said, I didn't like the sound it made until I learned how to pick, you know, in a different, uh, with a different angle, the way the pick strikes the, the strings. And that was no biggie. I just kind of had to get used to playing with my wrist in a little bit different position than what I had been playing with. Um, I don't have my glasses. I can't see. M. Goins, G O I N S, at bluechippick.net. Email that guy or call Matthew Goins, is his name. Call him at 865 803 9442. I'll put this in the links below as well uh, if you want to talk to him or 
I talked to him on the phone. I, they made a mistake. The first chip they sent, the uh, first pick they sent me was the wrong one. And I sent it back and I waited like two weeks and never heard anything. And I emailed Matthew, this guy here, and he said he never received a pick from me. Uh, I don't know what happened to it, if it got lost or someone pocketed it or what. But uh, luckily I had a tracking number and I gave him that and he could see from that that I did in fact return the pick to have it replaced. And he immediately sent me the replacement pick even though they don't know what happened to the one, the jazz pick that I ordered. But uh, that was real cool of him to do that. So uh, I think you can order these blue chip picks and try them and if you don't like them I think he told me you can get a refund as long as the pick's not damaged or scarred up or, you know, beat up, you know, or scratched up or, you know, damaged anyway. It seems to me like that's what he said. Don't hold me to that. You can ask him about it when you call him or email him, and I'm sure he'll set the record straight with you there. So, uh, that's about all I can tell you guys on these blue chip picks. I think they're a little expensive, you know, but in this day and age... We all know we get what we pay for, you know. So uh, I would highly recommend you try one or go to the website. The, the link I'm going to put down below, Adam, uh, I'm not going to say his last name because I'll screw it up. You can see what it is when you get to his channel. Um, you may want to go that route, check those picks out. They, they seemed and looked and sounded like they might be very good, you know, maybe better than Blue Chip. I don't know. Like I say, I never tried one, but if I was going to try another pick besides Blue Chip, that's the one I would go with. And it's the one I would recommend, even though I haven't seen him. It's just what I've heard on his channel and what I've read about him and uh, the ones I've looked at online. I think you can get them in different collars, too. Blue Chip only makes the one collar. It's a tan, brownish, uh, shitty-looking collar, actually. But, uh, you know, if it don't wear out, and you can get a blue chip with your name or initials on it, which doesn't wear off, um, you know, if it, if it lasts as long as these appear to be lasting, yeah, man, I'll pay 50 bucks a chip, a, a chip, a pick. I don't know why I keep on to call it chip for. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, that's about all I can tell you on the blue chip picks. Um... I wanted to show you those two guitars and some other things that you may or may not see on this channel. Now, uh, remember I said may or may not. You may or may not see me uh, doing stupid shit like putting new frets on an old violin. <laughs> Gibson. This is a good banjo. Somebody could play it. So you might see me uh, probably not playing any banjo. I quit that years ago. But you may very well, or may not, see me putting a new head on an old banjo. Completed. You might see me doing all kinds of stupid shit, like playing an electric guitar acoustically. Or an acoustic guitar electrically through an amp with distortion on it, a flat top. <laughs>
an upright base, uh, upside down. You, you could see anything, baby. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You need to, to subscribe and stay subscribed and tell all your friends subscribe because uh, anything could happen. And you can learn a lot of stuff here. You really can, believe it or not. <laughs> as weird as it sometimes gets. <laughs> well, cue ball made the scene. Uh, but yeah, man, watch uh, watch the channel. Stay tuned in. Uh, there's going to be a lot of good guitar lessons coming up. Uh, more repair work. I probably won't film everything that I'm getting to work on. But uh, which brings me to another thing: if you have an instrument that needs set up or repaired, uh, inbox me or get me on Facebook. Probably be the best thing. I'm easy to find there. Uh, shoot me a message on Facebook, and we'll talk about it. Uh, you know, if we agree. I'll give you my mailing address and you can send it to me and I'll fix it for you and I guarantee you you'll be satisfied if it can be fixed uh, you know there's a lot of um, room for error there the, the instrument may be not be fixable you know but if I take it and fix it I guarantee you uh, that you'll be satisfied with it or there will be no charge so anyway anyway cue balls ready to go yeah, man. Uh, stay tuned for the lessons. Stay tuned for repairs. And I want to thank every one of you guys and gals for subbing and staying subbed and watching this channel. I appreciate every one of you in whatever country you're in. Uh, it's amazing to me that people all over the globe is tuning in to this channel. And I appreciate that. Thank you all, each and every one of you, so much. Uh, there's going to be some more lessons, as I said, coming up. If you have any requests for something you want me to learn and teach flat picking or electric guitar if I know it if I can play it I'm working on getting my hands back right now that's been a battle it's just an ongoing battle but it's one I'm gonna win you'll see but yeah do stay tuned and uh, thank you every one of you guys and gals for your support we'll see you next time cheers I love you I love you. 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 Cheers, folks. <laughs>